Hey guys, all right, we are back for part two of a multi-part series when it comes to repurposing an old door. So let's get into those details. Alrighty guys, in just a few seconds, Patrick's gonna come back and join us. We're gonna break down some of the different detailings, the whys, the why nots, when it comes to brushes, rollers, and spray guns, and show you what we're doing for this project. joined us so let's talk about some of the different details or some of the different options before we paint a door yep okay so th it's been decided this door is going to get painted versus being stained so that makes things a little bit easier because staining is a lot more work and <clears throat> a lot more of a challenge we've so, done a lot of work so far <laughs> that's right so a couple things to consider when we talk about painting um this is your you've got multiple surfaces to cover. You've got your good flat surfaces and you've got your more intricate surfaces like this. So had this been a flat door slab, I would tell you that you could roll the whole thing easy peasy, no problem. The only thing to consider when you look at rolling is what type of roller cover do you want to work with? And you can see here, you've got a smooth, thick, oops, <laughs> smooth, medium fluff, extra fluff. Right, so basically you've got your, we'll say your uh, smooth to semi rough surface your semi rough to rough surface and then this one being a foam roller which is basically designed for smoother surfaces but also gives you a much smoother finished oh, texture okay. so a lot of folks don't use foam but i think foam is awesome and i'll show you a little bit uh, how foam is going to look like and then of course the brush we've got if anybody's walked into a, a big heart big orange or big blue hardware store yeah. you're going to see good better best as far as the brushes go there's, you know, the funny thing is, if I were to brush this right now with the absolute most cheapest brush or you could possibly mm -hmm. find, which is this little foam guy here, this gives one of the best finishes of all these no way. for about 50 cents because it's a flat surface. So when I run that paint across here like this, mm -hmm. I'm going to see no brush marks, no none of those kind of things that you're going to see with one of these brushes. Now, in most cases, you're going to see brush marks initially and this this becomes kind of a technique thing mm -hmm. as you learn to go over your paint strokes to try to smooth them out as best as possible and then gravity will at some point let that paint sit down on its own so it will tend to flatten out but if we were to paint part of the door with this brush part of the door with this brush and part of the door with this brush you would see a small difference one from the other and this one the cheapest foam brush probably being the flattest of them all so it's really a matter of preference and so in your case because the door has some intricate detail you're going to likely do roller on all your flat surfaces like here and here mm -hmm. and then brushing here's a flat surface here and then brushing inside of these now with one of these rollers you can roll a lot of this but it gets a little messy when you get into the corners here because you can actually dab these in the corners mm -hmm. and cover those spots but it gets kind of messy and having a brush to kind of pull some of the excess away is a good idea so you're like i said in most cases you're going to do a combination of both of course, making sure that all the hardware is gone before you ever do any of this and paint every every possible surface. So when the hardware goes back on, it's going back on top of the painted surface versus not painted. So now your the last option to look at here is, is, is this a door you want to brush, roll, or what I didn't mention, spray. So here's a couple spray options. Some of you have seen this before in like or Harbor Freights um, or other discount stores like that. This is a hand, this is a airless sprayer, and there's also the mid-size airless sprayers, and then of course the big size, which I didn't bring today, but where we have the big size sprayer airless sitting over in the side and has a 20-foot hose or so and the handle. Big 
for big jobs. Okay. Yeah, I would not recommend that kind of a sprayer for this because it's just one door. If you're doing five or six doors or maybe the whole house of doors, then that could be good. You can set them all up in one shot and then just spray them all in one shot. You're not gonna be wasting as much material. That type of sprayer will waste more paint than one of these guys. Okay. Um, now, if I were going to be staining the door, I might look at using this sprayer, but I don't know, I don't know that I recommend the sprayer for latex paint. Um, this one actually, I've taken this and modified it and drilled this out. This is what's called a HVLP sprayer, high volume, low pressure. So it's designed to take paint here, spray it out. These are used a lot of times for automobiles or those kinds of paints for you know, enamel surfaces. Mm -hmm. Not as much for latex. Latex is a thicker paint, requires a bigger hole to go through. Wow. So yeah, I've actually drilled this one out and drilled it out based on some recommended videos that I watched and still requires you to thin the paint some. It's still a not, lot of work going yeah, on. Yeah, I'm not like so this. sure I recommend this as the option. Okay. Um, this True Coat sprayer is the first of your handhelds. This guy works great. I've used them on many, many doors and it sprays very well and you don't have to paint your paint. It works really, really well. Like I said, and of course your last option being the big giant hairless sprayer, which also works very, very well. With these sprayers, the tip that you use on the sprayer is very, very important. And if you, especially with the big sprayer, big sprayer, which I keep pointing to, I know, we don't I'm have like, one. Keep looking too. Yeah, we'll call it the virtual sprayer. Um, those spray handles will take a multiple different types of tips, and that tip is very important because it defines how much volume comes out and how small the particles are that come out. So you can have, you can get a very very fine spray like for a door like this mm -hmm. that'll give a beautiful beautiful coat. Your your single best option I would say for spraying doors and having them look as best as possible is to spray them. They will always look better than rolling, brushing, or anything else. But Consistent. it's a more it's a more costly option because you've got to have the equipment to do it. Okay. okay. Well, we're definitely not doing this, so <laughs> let's just go ahead and be honest. Which one are we going to start? Again, we're going to go with more of the roll-on brushes for flat yep. surfaces. Now, when we're doing this, I have to ask. When you said we're going to use a brush in here, there's going to be slightly less of that smooth finish. So should I go ahead and paint these sections first and then go over with the smoother roller? Is there a method that is better than one? Not necessarily, okay. no. Uh, some folks like to get all the flat spots out of the way first and then go in and start cutting in detail. And some folks will choose to cut the detail in first and then do the flat spots. I would normally cut detail in first and then if, because if I mess something up, I can always stand a little bit off if I want to um, and then run all my, run all my flat stuff afterwards. Okay. So I would, I would recommend cutting your detail first. Okay. Sounds great. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the paint now. And as I, as I think you mentioned before, with this door, with any door, always prime first. Yes. Priming is very, very important. It Let's creates a, it creates a much better bond with the painted surface than just painting by itself. So you should always prime first. The, the paint goes on better. It looks better when it's all said and done, and it also it's holds better. up better. Okay. Yep, you get less chance of it peeling off, which can happen with some paints. Alrighty, sounds good. So is it time to uh, start painting now? Yep, let's do all it. All right, let's get started. <laughs> All right guys, time to flip this door over and finish out the other side and get painting.
to get back to work. It's time to get back to work. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but you want to make sure that before you get started that, that, that your router blade itself is set to the same depth as your hinge. See now, I have a secondary surface. Once I get inside of there, I'll slide this in a little bit more. That way I can, that way I can cover the gap. Alrighty guys, so the sanding is completely done. After we made sure we got the primer on every bit of that door, we went through and just finalized the sanding. We wanted to ensure that it was super smooth before we jump over to paint. But until then, Patrick's already started on that door jam. I told you on the last episode that we had a tiny little problem. He's fixed that up. So let's go back to that beautiful bathroom and check it out.
Okay, so if you've got to cut a tile out, which in this case we're gonna to have to, we didn't we didn't talk about this earlier on, but by virtue of cutting this door back, we now have a problem because we have no tile to cover up what will now be under our door. So this one has to come out. So generally when I take a tile out, what I like to do is to first go in and cut the grout line around it first and then break the tile up because I've seen that with some tiles, if you start beating on this tile with a hammer, because the grout does adhere to both tiles, I've actually seen the adjacent tile crack, which just makes it a bigger problem because then I gotta replace two tiles. So I've also, in some cases, will run a score line down this tile, maybe this way and this way, so that when I break it up, it actually breaks cleaner and it takes some of the pressure off the surrounding tiles because we don't want to start breaking up a whole bunch of them, we just want to replace the single tile. All right, it's time to go take a break, go play with the dogs. We're gonna wait for all of that painting to be done so it can dry up, and then we're gonna put that last coat on. Then we're gonna talk the details on that door jam with Patrick when he gets back. too far this way or if I'm if I'm aiming like if I put this in now it would most likely come out this side so you gotta be real careful try to keep that line dead down because they're two inch long uh, nails now we can now we can go back to where we were Also make sure that they hold tighter. All right guys, time to get the door put in place. We are finally done with the majority of the work. There's gonna be a few different touch-ups that have to be done, but the door's ready to go in, so. Alrighty guys, doors put in place, a few minor touches that need to be done by Patrick, but other than that, the door is in place, you guys. The door is in and mounted. We've got some final work to do, a um, little bit of shedding to do, a uh, little spacing. We'll, we'll uh, knock a few things over a little bit to make sure everything's 100% in place, but for the most part, the door is in. The uh, hardware is, the uh, hinge hardware is in, and the knob hardware, as you'll notice, is not in yet because the homeowners are having that refinished to match the rest. So they're gonna have that electric plated into chrome so that everything in the bathroom is the same chrome finish. Uh, so for the most part, the door part is in. 
I, oh, God, wait. Melissa's in here. Oh, sorry. You forgot about <laughs> me. But as you guys can see, all the hard work, the doors finally all in. Your job is done. We're just, we'll take care of getting the rest of it put together. Uh, we'll get the trim on. I really appreciate you going through and doing all this work on the door. Door came out great. Homeowners love it. So we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking about the next project. Maybe that door.